So at the very beginning, I have sent you some reading materials. You can go through them. Now, this is something which I caught from a book which I all, always talk about. The Courage to Act. That's the autobiography of Ben Barnanke. I'll quickly go through it. Then we'll come to today's uh, main topics. Now, this talks about 2008 crisis and how he simply explained that. Okay. Yeah. They now, this one, FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, like our Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme. Uh, observation that bank capital levels remained historically high was comforting. We talked about capital adequacy. Now, year 2008, capital was satisfactory. Then he describes it in a very simple manner. Capital, which represents the stake of bank owners or shareholders, acts as a buffer against losses. Then he further explained with a simple example. Imagine a hypothetical bank that made 100 in mortgage loans. Means what? Your asset side is 100. With 90% of the funds lent from depositors. So liabilities 90%. A equals C plus L. Then the remaining L is 10%. That is the bank's capital. If the bank lost $5 on the mortgage, its shareholders would be hurting. They are 10%, $10 stake would now be worth only $5. But the bank would still be solvent, able to pay back its depositors if they withdraw their money. Okay, so depositors are not hurt even if the bank makes 5%, $5 loss. If instead the bank had funds lending with less capital, say 5% and 95 in deposits, then a loss of 5 or more on the bank's mortgage lending would wipe out the shareholders and put the bank out of business. Ample capital accordingly implies that the banking system can withstand significant losses and continue to extend credit to household and business. So we talked about capital adequacy, then I showed an example, cap, uh, central finance, where they remain as the highest capital adequate finance company. So having enough capital means what? It can withstand significant losses, but still continue to do business. Seen from the vantage point of early 2007, the economy's good performance combined with relatively small size of the subprime mortgage market. Okay, now we have a nice word, subprime. Normally in banking, we use the term prime. Prime means good. So prime customers means what? Quality, good customers. Who are they? So prime customers show that they can pay back and they have collateral. So securities, if they fail to pay, the bank can sell out. Now, subprime means second to best. So in police, you would say inspector, then sub-inspector is the person second to inspector. Same way, subprime means what? Not that good. Okay, means what? They don't have these items. Lead, uh, now subprime mortgage market and what appeared to be healthy banking system led me and others at the Fed here, Fed means Federal Reserves, that's the Central Bank of US, to conclude that subprime problems, though certainly a major concern for affected communities and the housing sector generally, were unlikely to cause major economic damage. So in 2007, they could see certain problems, but they never thought it will expand beyond the affected community. But we failed to anticipate the problems in subprime mortgage market could trigger an old-fashioned financial panic, albeit in a new unfamiliar place. Okay. The recurring financial panics in the 19th and early 20th century began often began with bank run. Now you know what is bank run. Bank run means the depositors withdrawing money in a rush, triggered by events that considered alone did not appear serious enough to cause a systemic crisis. Okay. One after the other, all the banks are falling, so you call that systemic crisis. The panic of 1907, for instance, had modest origins. A group of speculators suffered a big loss 
after they tried unsuccessfully to corner the stock of their United Copper Company. Now he's talking about earlier bank line. So there was a company and their speculators. Speculators means the people who want to make quick profit out of share trading. The, se the speculators were known to have close connection to New York City banks and trust companies, bank like financial institutions. Depositors had no idea whether their particular institution and finance, finance the speculators and an era before federal deposit insurance. Now we are talking about a system before deposit insurance. Naturally, they lined up to withdraw their cash. Now what happened? A set of speculators artificially want to increase the price of a company which they have selected, United Copper Company. Then the depositors thought, okay, our banks are funding them. Now these days we see basically two companies in Columbus Stock Exchange are promoted, speculated, and people flock around just two companies. And its price substantially went up, such a situation. Now you are buying shares on whose money? Then the depositors thought, okay, they are buying our bank's money. So the depositors try to withdraw their cash. The run spread sparking a nationwide financial panic that contribute to a serious recession. What is recession? If an economy is not growing consecutively for more than three quarters, we call it recession. The ultimate economic cost of the panic for outweighed and magnitude that triggered a failed scheme of handful speculators. Okay. Now what triggered that? We call triggering events. Very simple incident, but that create a valley of issues. Today, the depositors almost never line up at teller windows to take out their cash. Today, you are not going to ATM machine. Just withdraw money. Just to withdraw money. Now, what do you do? You can transfer online. Since 1934, the federal government has protected bank depositors against losses up to a limit, even if their bank fails. That is what you call deposit insurance. So in Sri Lanka, I have given you the value 600,000. But that did not mean that run were history, runs were history. Okay, now we have deposit insurance scheme. It does not mean there won't be any bank run. As we were learning in August 2007, they now occurred in different forms. Now, physically, you don't go to bank to withdraw money, but there are other forms. Over the past few decades, a network of diverse non-banking financial firms and markets dubbed the shadow banking system by economist Paul McCulley had developed alongside the formal banking system. At the very beginning, I have given you this question, what do you mean by shadow banks? So shadow banks are NBFIs, and the term is used by or originated by an economist called Paul McCulley. The shadow banking system included non-bank lenders like mortgage companies and consumer finance companies, as well as companies operating in securities markets such as investment banks. Okay, so these shadow banks consist of the institutions mentioned. These firms relied on short-term funding other than government-insured deposits. Commercial banks too increasingly supplemented their insured deposits with uninsured funding, including short-term lending between banks in the so-called interbank market. The short-term uninsured financial financing typically provided institutional investors like money market funds or pension funds is called wholesale funding. Okay, now we have two types of funding, wholesale funding and retail funding. Wholesale funding means large funds. For an example, I talked about Norwegian Petroleum Fund. That's a wholesale funding. When they come to invest in a country, they may buy about 5%, 6% of a company. That's a substantial amount. So that's wholesale funding. To distinguish it from the bank deposits of individual individuals known as retail funding. If you and I buy shares, that's retail funding. You don't, we don't have that much capacity. But like retail funding in the days before deposit insurance, wholesale funding is potentially subject to runs. Okay, even wholesale funding is subject to runs. When the wholesale investors sense something unusual. They want to withdraw money. 
Many of the complex securities that provide troublesome during the crisis were financed directly or indirectly by wholesale funding, mostly in the form of commercial paper or repos. We have talked about commercial papers and repos. Commercial paper, short term debt with typical maturity of 30 days or less has been used by both financial and non-financial companies since at least the mid 18 double laws. Traditionally, government paper has been unsecured. So the traditional commercial paper has been unsecured. Repayment is based only on the promise of the borrower and not on collateral. Commercial papers are issued without a collateral. So that's the unsecured instrument. Thus, only well-established credit-worthy companies could issue it. Okay, so only well-established companies could issue it. However, the years before the crisis saw a rapid expansion in the use of new form of commercial paper, so-called asset-backed commercial paper. Commercial papers means no security is attached, but you have to evaluate the company. Now comes the situation, ABCP, asset-backed commercial paper. Okay. The same thing happened to shares. Shares means equity, means what? You get only ownership, no promised dividends, no other guaranteed return. Only thing you are given is ownership. Then what is non-voting shares? There are shares where you don't even get ownership and you call it non-voting shares, okay? Now, there are deviations like that. Originally, what is meant can be later changed. Commercial papers, no collaterals attached. Shares, ownership of equity. Now, what has happened? ABCP, asset-backed commercial papers. Non-voting shares, no equity, no ownership. Okay. ABCP was issued by a type of shadow bank known as a conduit, also called a special purpose vehicle. So you have something called special purpose vehicle. It's not a physical vehicle. It's a shadow bank. A conduit is a legal entity set up usually by a bank or other financial institution to hold mortgages, credit card debt, auto loans, and many other forms of credit, as well as more complex securities that combine different types of loans, so-called instrumented credit products. ABCP was asset backed in this sense. If necessary, the conduit could presumably sell off its loans and securities to repay ABCP debt issued. Okay, so the financial field is becoming very creative. You bundle receivables, say people's leasing. They lease out vehicles. The vehicle's real ownership lies with people's leasing company. You bundle that and mortgage this ownership with another bank. So that is securitization okay. so receivables from some other people becomes an asset to a bank if it's asset that can become a security if it's a security you can take a loan against that okay. so the financial world is becoming very creative even though wholesale funding is not government insured most market participants and Regulators saw it as relatively impervious to runs. Reports were considered particularly safe, even if the borrowing firms went bankrupt. The collateral protect the lender, but when supply mortgage began to go bad, wholesale funding providers were forced to consider a new riskiness of borrowing firms and the complex and opaquely structured securities that they sometimes offered as collaterals. Okay. Now these collaterals means what? The receivables are graded credit ratings. Okay. Many lenders had been relying on credit ratings to evaluate collaterals. Okay. Now people's leasing is bundling up their receivables and put that as a mortgage. Then a credit rating company comes and take this product and rate it. Okay. Triple A. The best knowns were Standard and Poor's and Moody's and Fitch that were paid by security issuers. Okay. When losses started surfacing in even highly rated mortgage related securities, lenders understandably lost faith in the ratings. Now, even the triple A security failed. Means what? What is the purpose of these ratings? Unable to evaluate the risk of complex securities on their own, they pulled back from lending against any type of security that include even a small amount of subprime or other risky mortgages. 
they behaved like grocery shoppers who after hearing report of mad cow disease decided to avoid all beef even though only a mini fraction of cattle are affected okay so this is how people behave when you hear right in sri lankan context when you hear there is covid in china we get panicked and when we when there were reports of one or two covid patient country locked down for maybe three months without having any person to spread out covid near you that's how we behave okay when retail depositors run they simply withdraw their money runs by wholesale funding providers are more complicated because as an alternative to withdraw their money completely they can ask for greater protection or more favorable terms as a first step many commercial papers lenders for example short tender the term for which they would lend to as little overnight repo lenders have the option of asking more collateral per dollar lent or refusing to lend against riskier or more complex securities as a tradition okay so this is what is happening right just as the bank run of panic of 1907 amplified losses suffered by handful stock speculators into a national credit crisis this is how it happened a simple event can trigger a massive economic disaster right so i'm giving you these kind of reading out articles and uh, you will be able to improve the quality of your answers say uh, shadow banking now you know what to refer then this one i have given you a equals c plus l then we talked about capital adequacy now you know what is the importance of having more capital okay right now we'll move into today's main topics i have selected two other areas leasing and cooperative societies we'll see what we can do today okay leasing finance leasing business means the business of investing money for the provision of equipment under a financed lease okay i think these slides are uh, yeah you can see the slides now leasing leasing means what ownership is transferred to the financier and the person who took the facility can become the user means what without owning you can use the asset and get the economic benefit out of this economic benefit what you are getting you can slowly pay out that is leasing agreement however after paying all your dues will you get the ownership is my question here now you take a vehicle under leasing agreement and you pay you have to pay a particular amount say 40000 for 48 months and you without any delay sharp on due date pay 40000 and now we have paid 48 renters will you get the vehicle no right why why at the same time tell me a person who has not got the vehicle after paying all these rentals okay settlement fee is needed okay now it's like this leasing agreement is for using the vehicle it's not for owner transferring the ownership right? the absolute ownership of the vehicle lies with the financier maybe a bank maybe a finance company even after paying the last rental you are not the owner who is the owner the financier the absolute ownership lies with the finance exactly absolute ownership lies with the finance company however as a practice though it's not legally 
a definite requirement. We offer no objection later, and now you can transfer the vehicle to your own name. Right? If you compare that with higher purchasing, the intention is to purchase. Right? For leasing, the intention is to use, not the ownership. For higher purchasing, the term itself suggests purchase. I am paying with the intention of purchasing. So at the end, I'll become the owner. Here, unless the ownership gets transferred, I'm not the owner. The user is not the owner. Okay, we'll move into. Okay, so finance business means, okay. Now here you have a party, lesso, lesso, lessi and the seller. Now lesso is the finance company. Okay. Lessi is the customer. Right. Let's see it again. Lesso is the owner who possesses the item. Lessi is the user. User. Now we'll get one term, monetary board means under monetary law act, CBSL. Uh, yeah, monetary board means the unit coming under, falling under CBSL. Now we have two types of leasing. One is operating lease. The other is finance lease. Okay. Which one is popular in Sri Lanka? Operating lease or finance lease? Which one is popular? There are two types of leasing, operating and finance. Which one is popular? Okay. Right, to say that, let's see what are the difference between operating lease and finance lease. Operating lease, ownership with the finance company. There is no option to transact at all. Even after paying 48 months rental, you will never ever become the owner. Not at all the ownership gets transferred. That's operating lease. Finance lease, transfer option at the end of the lease period is there with the lessee. Transfer option, there's option to transfer. Okay, now tell me what is popular. Operating lease or finance lease. In operating lease, the ownership never ever gets transferred. Under finance lease, ownership can transfer. Now, what is popular in Sri Lanka? Operating lease or finance lease? Finance lease. Correct. Finance lease. Okay. Now, most of the finance companies are not interested in operating lease. Few finance companies really do operating lease. I'll share you some of our experience with operating lease. Operating leasing means you are using the vehicle while understand, while you have an very clear understand that you will never own the vehicle. Is it must to take insurance too? Yes. Right. Now, under operating lease, our contract with you, suppose you are getting an operating leasing facility from us. Our contract means we will provide your vehicle in good condition for the specific period. Within this period, if the vehicle need to be serviced, repaired, insured, all these things will be done by us, the bank. Suppose your vehicle met with an accident, we will give you a backup vehicle and take the vehicle and repair by the bank. After repair, we will hand over the vehicle and take the backup vehicle. Okay. Now that is operating lease. You understand you will never get the ownership. And you understand whenever you make met with an accident, meet with an accident, your vehicle will be replaced. Contrast to that, finance lease, you use the vehicle with the understanding I will get the ownership one day. And if it meets with an accident, all the difficulties I have to bear. Right. 
simply tell me in which category the customer will look after the vehicle in their best interest. There are two types, operating and finance. Under which, yes, under finance leasing, the customer will look after their vehicle with their best interest. Why? Because I know I will one day be the owner of this facility. Okay. Now, operating lease, people use the vehicle carelessly because they know I'm not going to be the owner. Okay. We'll see some other references. Risk and rewards related to asset with the bank, with the customer. Okay. Now, what is the risk? I lease out a vehicle and after four years, the market value comes down. That's the risk. What is the reward? After using four years, the vehicle value substantially goes up. Now that risk can reward with the bank. The risk can reward with the customer. Okay. Now these days we see vehicle prices substantially going up. Right. There were certain vehicles. When we evaluate that, when we get the valuation in the month of March, it was X. Then we got the valuation for some other purpose in April. My God, X plus 30. Then we obtained valuation of the same vehicle in August, X plus 60. In short, these days you get a superb reward for holding a vehicle. But who will become the owner? If it's a lease, the customer. If it's an operating lease, the bank. Purchase option. Under operating lease, you don't have any option. Yes, the customer has option. Expenses borne, repair, services, all, insurance, all by the operating leasing provider, say the bank. Here, all the expenses by the customer. Running cost, no running or administration cost. Running cost and administration expenses are higher. Right. For the customer, for the customer. Tax benefit. No depreciation can be claimed why ownership is not getting transferred. Interest and depreciation both can be, can be claimed. So these are the differences between operating and capital leases. Now, this is another one. Treated as lessee's asset, recorded in the balance sheet, <clears throat> records depreciation and interest expenses, transfer ownership, bargain purchase option. Operating lease. Related as periodic operating expenses recorded in the income statement does not depreciate. Lease payments can be tax deductible. Now, what is coming under common? Okay. Now, these are the two differences between operating lease and finance lease. Okay. So, for us, we have a separate unit called a subsidiary coming under the main company that is known as People's Leasing Fleet Management Limited. That's a subsidiary. So we offer <clears throat> operating leasing facilities under this subsidiary. However, when we are offering operating leasing facilities, we select very good companies. So we have never given a facility, operating leasing facility for an individual. So there are some companies where they believe it's better to use the company without having a need to get the ownership. All what they need is to use the vehicle. For an example, let's say there are companies where they will hand over the vehicle for the usage of their engineers for a specific time. Suppose you are going to construct a massive apartment and the duration of construction is. If a person got, sorry, I didn't see that clearly. If a person got into leasing agreement and after some time he is willing to pay all the balances settlement, is it a good idea to do so? Yeah, that depends on the duration, right? Normally, insure, uh, interest, your rental, your installment will have two parts, capital plus interest. Now, how you're paying is within the first two years, 
a massive amount of interest is paid and little amount of capital is paid. When it comes to the last years, what we are really paying is capital and a very small amount of interest. So when you're taking a leasing facility, if you want to go for the early settlement, that's all right. If you can settle it as early as possible. But if you are waiting for the last year to settle, then there will be very less benefit to you. Okay. Right. So you can go for the early settlement, but the duration matters. Earlier, the better. Right. So we were having these operating leasing facilities and uh, we have given it for, okay, now suppose a company is engaged in construction. Now they are constructing a massive apartment and the duration is three years. So we'll, they will give vehicles for their engineers and the top rankers for this duration. So the company is not interested in anything after three years. So they will come for the operating lease. Their employees can use the vehicle and if the vehicle is having a problem, we will replace that with another vehicle and it will uh, be the end after three years. After three years, now the company have completed constructing the apartment. They don't need these employees so they can be moved into some other country. There are such companies. Okay, the engineer will be given three years. You are looking after you are the main engineer for this project. And once you complete the project, you had to go to Maldives. So the company gives the vehicle only for three years. So they get, within these three years, they don't want to miss any of his working days due to vehicle repairs, maintenance, services. So that is transferred to the bank and they happily use the vehicle and hand over. Okay. Now, these days, when the vehicle price has gone up, finance leasing, the customer get the benefit. But for operating lease, whenever we sell the vehicle, we get the benefit. So this is where risk and reward comes. Securitization. Now, suppose we have only 10 leasing facilities given. Customer has to pay. That is an asset. Now we will, we are the absolute owner. We will bundle these 10 files, CR books and others, and hand over that to a bank. So the bank will put this 10 file into their maybe safe. And against that security, they will give us money. This is what we call securitization. Securitization means the issuance of securities by a special purpose vehicle, which are backed by assets consisting of any or all the rights in a finance lease or any equipment forming the subject matter of a finance lease or both transferred or signed by a lessor in favor of such special purpose vehicle. So the leasing company needs more money. So what they do now, especially if it's a specialized leasing company, now you can't uh, obtain deposits from general public, but you have already given certain loans to your customers, leasing facilities. You will bundle that give it to a bank as a security and take loan and you give away leasing against that loan you have already taken. That's their business. So you call it securitization. Now that is known as a special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicle means a body corporate or unincorporated including a trust established solely for the purpose of securitization and for activities connected there in or incidental to. Now these assets are transferred into a subsidiary company of yours and you call that corporate or this company a special purpose vehicle a security there's agreement in leasing and that's basically between lesso and lessee but the bank is not giving you the vehicle who is giving you the vehicle that is given by the supplier supply means a person who supplies an equipment for the purpose of finance lease but does not include the lessee, where the lessee supplies an equipment. Okay. Right. So supplier, basically the person who sells the vehicle. Supply agreement means an agreement entered to buy a lessor with 
supply for the supply of an equipment by the supply under finance lease. Okay. Now there are three parties involved and everything is clearly defined. Who is the lessor, who is the lessee <clears throat> and who is the supplier? I'm quoting you something uh, from a book I have <clears throat> read about Islamic finance. Why I take this as the example is to show the importance of these definitions. Okay. Yeah. So this is the book. Now in Islamic finance, they came up with something similar to leasing. They call it Muraba. This one, DIB. Dubai Islamic Bank was the first Islamic bank. And uh, it was pioneered by a <clears throat> very good gentleman. And <clears throat> he was really interested in creating a bank for his community where they don't like the topic interest. Now this shows some issues he faced because he's pioneering a new product. So they named it Muraba and uh, there were certain court cases in Dubai. In one such case, filed with Dubai first instance courts in 1984, a buyer had required Dubai Islamic Bank, say the so to buy a car according to his description means what customer comes to the bank and say okay i'm ready for this leasing facility and buy a vehicle on behalf of me now that's where the supply agreement comes this is something new for this new bank they are moving into muraba something similar to leasing now customer says okay buy this vehicle for me and promised that he would buy it from the bank according to the agreement signed on the Muraba contract. Buy it from the supplier and I'll be the payer for it for the specific period. The bank imported the vehicle and handed it over to the customer. After driving around it in for a while, the customer complained that the specifications of the car were not as agreed upon in the contract. What has happened? There are three parties, the bank, the customer, and the vehicle importer. That vehicle importer is called supplier. So that's a tri-party agreement. Bank buys the vehicle from the supplier and sell and hand over it to the customer. Customer should be the user. Now the user after having a test run says, I'm not happy. The court sided with the bank because the buyer accepted the car as it was at the time of delivery. Okay. At the time of delivery, customer accepted. Now the customer says, I am not happy. Okay. And customer says, I am not happy. Since I am not happy, I am not ready to pay. These are the issues. To avoid such, these contracts are signed. Supplier agreement. Lease agreement. Okay. So there are three parties. Supplier. Bank. Customer. Now we are talking about the Act, Finance Leasing Act, number 56 of 2000. Who can do leasing facilities? Who can engage in leasing business? All right, first, a licensed specialized bank can do leasing. A finance company can engage in leasing. A public company incorporated under Companies Act, having such minimum issued and paid up capital, can engage in leasing business. Now, CBSL can cancel for the suspension of the registration. Failure to commence business within 12 months after the registration. You become registered, but you fail to start business. Okay. So, we started a subsidy in Bangladesh and we were given a due time. If you do not start the business within this time, your registration will get cancelled. Similarly in Sri Lanka. Ceasing to carry on finance leasing business. Proposing to make or making any composition or arrangement with creditors or going into liquidation or being wound up or otherwise dissolved. 
Now, these are the reasons for cancelling your registration once issued the registration. Carrying on its business in a manner likely to be determined by the interest of the lessee. Inable to meet its obligations to lessees, creditors or suppliers. Acting in contravention to any provisions of this act. Okay, so these are the reasons why your registration can be cancelled. Okay. So like uh, Pawning Act, now I'm looking into that. Furnishing false, misleading, inaccurate information, concealing information. The license issued to such establishment has been revoked by the authority. Okay, you are given the license and that is revoked. Duties of the lessors, lessees and suppliers. So leasing is a tri-party agreement. It involved lessor, lessee and supplier. These are the duties. A lessee has a right to be the undisturbed and peaceful possession of the equipment provided to the lessee under a finance lease agreement. And it shall be the duty of the lessor to ensure the protection of such right. Okay, the user can peacefully use the vehicle. The provision of subsection shall not apply where a lessee has by reason of any act or omission of the lease ceased to be entitled to right to undisturbed and peaceful. Okay. However, if you are not paying, then you can be disturbed. Use of equipment. It shall be the duty of the lessee, that is the user, to take proper care of the equipment provided under the finance lease. Use it for the purpose for which it is used and subject to fair wear and tear and any modifications agreed to by parties to the finance lease. Keep it in the condition of which it was delivered to the lessee. Okay, so we expect the lessee, the user, to care, to take, to take proper care of the vehicle, service it, okay, and uh, use it for the purpose which it is provided. Okay, so we don't provide vehicles for illegal activities. Now in Sri Lanka, there are a lot of rules to say what is legal and what is uh, illegal. For an example, transporting sand for a specific time, say on certain days you cannot. If you breach that, then you are not supposed to uh, properly use the vehicle. If you use it for illegal purposes, non-delivery, late delivery and non-conformity of the equipment. Where an equipment specified in a finance lease has not been delivered to a lessee or before the time fixed under such lease delivery or has been delivered after such time or where the equipment delivered does not confirm the terms or the specifications the supply agreement related to such lessee may be subject to provision, reject the equipment and terminate such finance lease. Okay. So the supplier, if he fails to give the vehicle as per the agreement then the user can reject the equipment and terminate at the very beginning we talked about dubai islamic bank how they face this problem and then they create legal precedents here we have this act and access how we have to uh, act on such situation where a lessee terminates a finance lease under subsection, the lessee may withhold the payment under such finance lease and further shall be entitled to recover from the lessor any money paid, okay, any benefits derived by the lessee prior to the termination, any expenses incurred by the lessor in connection with the lease. Okay, so everything is written down. This is how we have to act. Where an equipment specified in a finance lease delivered to a lessee within fixed term does not confirm to the deliveries now these are the supplier uh, related items right so i'm leaving this for you to read yourself lessee's acceptance where a lessee accept the equipment provided under finance lease the terms and conditions of the lease shall be irrevocable right the moment you accept okay i'm fine i'm happy with the vehicle then the terms and conditions irrevocable. Now you have the duty to pay accordingly. Return of equipment. Upon the expiration of the period of finance lease or its prior termination under this act, the lessee shall return the equipment to the lessor 
in such condition. Okay. Now you can uh, sign off, return the equipment as per the contract. Then the termination or variation of conditions of a supply agreement. Lessee shall not terminate supply agreement. The rights conferred under lessee under this act in relation to supply agreement shall not be affected. Okay. The lesser shall not enter a supply agreement with the supply for the supply of an equipment under finance lease until the lessee agrees in writing with the terms and conditions, warranties and specifications specified in such. Okay. So these three parties, supplier, bank and the buyer should agree upon the vehicle. Okay. Supplier's obligation. Now what should supplier do? Where a lessor enters into supply agreement for the supply of an equipment, the lessee shall also have the right to enforce. Where, okay, where supplier discharge the liability under supply agreement to either the lessor or the lessee, the supplier shall be released from the liability to the other. Right. So the moment you agree, supplier should be released from their responsibility. Non liability for lessor for loss in relation of equipment. A lessor. So the bank shall not incur any liability in the lease for any loss suffered by the lessee in respect of the equipment provided under the final lease, except to the extent of any loss arising out of the leases, reliance on lessor's skill and judgment of the selection of the equipment or in the lessor's intervention in the selection of the supplier. In the specification. Right, very simply. There's a, yeah, now you have asked a good question. So the, I saw it now. What, is, what about the interest payment in DIB? Yeah, in Islamic finance, there is nothing called interest payment. It's profit sharing, okay? So theoretically that is profit or loss sharing. So they don't charge anything called interest. So the vehicle value plus loss or profit out of using this vehicle so this is what islamic banking is okay anyway i'm not going to talk about islamic bank but i talk about when you start up something new these are the problems you will face when you have a le uh, legal enactment like leasing act then that covers all these issues without having such legal coverage when you start business like dubai islamic bank they were doing it for the very first time they never thought the supply is important a customer asked the bank to hand over the vehicle and the bank is discussing with the supplier now this three party agrees okay we are happy we want nissan x-trail XYZ, this this model vehicle and the color is blue and the interior is this. Now the supply import the vehicle. Customer goes to the harbor, take the vehicle. Means what? At that moment you can say, okay, I don't like the vehicle. Then he run the vehicle and say, I'm not happy. I want to hand over it to the bank. Right? So that's the tri-party agreement. Then the bank went to courts. Then the court case came, okay. Customer now cannot say, I am not accepting. In Sri Lanka, this is covered under Finance Lease Act. Okay. So this is where the importance of acts come in. If not, if you are trying to do something new without having these legal enactments, then each and every case you have to go to the courts and take precedence. Now the legal case will become your precedence. That happened to Dubai Islamic Bank. Okay. Now, a customer would go to the car sale and select the vehicle and maybe when he's not having good technical knowledge he'll come with the technician maybe the technician will come with some small gadgets like a small hammer and some other things inspect the vehicle and say okay it's a good vehicle then the customer would sign the contract with the bank now the customer once selected he cannot hereafter complain I'm not happy with the vehicle, you have to pay. Right? At that moment, you can say, okay, I'm not going to buy this vehicle. Then the bank is not influencing you to say, okay, you must buy now. No. 
once you showed I'm happy with the vehicle and sign the contract, then you have to pay. After that, you can't say I'm not happy with the vehicle. Okay. Right. So that part is talked under this contract. Yeah, default by the lessee. Now you are happy with the vehicle. Okay. Now supply is out of the scene. Now it's with the bank and the customer. Now customer falls into default. Okay. So there are certain conditions. What is that? If you accept the vehicle, this is your rental, pay it. And he's not paying. Now what? Require the lessee to make accelerated payment of the monies due under the lease, where the lease so provide or where a lessee fails to take accelerated payments as required under the paragraph, terminate the finance lease. Now, first you ask the customer to pay. Your recoveries will look into that. Maybe send letters. You are not paying. The customer is not paying. Now you can cancel the contract, terminate the contract, recover possession of the equipment. Okay. We will terminate the vehicle and in our terms, we would say seize the vehicle, repossess the vehicle. Okay. Recover such damages. Okay. When we recover, when we uh, take over the vehicle, if there are certain damages, we can claim it from the customer. Accelerated payments or termination with notice to lessee, a lessor, the bank, prior to enforcing the right to accelerate payment or to terminate of a finance lease under section 20, serves to be registered post a notice on the lessee. By register post, you should notify the customer. Specifying the circumstances which had caused substantial failure of the lease within the meaning of the finance lease. Appoint a date, not being a date less than seven days after the receipt of the notice for remedying the failure. Okay, you have not paid for this much of pay period, now pay it. And you have to give a date which is not less than seven days from the date of notifying. Where a lessee fails to remedy the failure, specified in notice served under subsection on or before the date appointed in the notice or fails to give reasonable cause of such failure, the lessor may act in the accordance with the provisions of section 20. Now, what is section 20 says? Yeah, you can, since you are the absolute owner, you can take the vehicle. Computation of damages. Finance lease may provide the manner in which damages recoverable under this act may be computed and such provision shall be enforced enforceable between lesso and the lessees unless the damages so computed would be substantial due diligence of the bank now the term lesso means the bank a lesso shall not be entitled to recover such damages which the lesso have a consideration on the circumstances of the case avoided due diligence okay you have to take do prior examinations transfer or assignment of the bank's rights, a lesser with the written consent of the lessee obtained at the time of entering to finance lease. So thereafter transfer or sign all or any of the lesser sites under the finance lease. So in relation to equipment provided to any registered establishment or to any special vehicle. Now your file can be transferred to a securitization. Provided that in the case of transfer of assignment to a special purpose vehicle, such transfer assignment shall be made only for the purpose of securitization. Okay, so that must be securitization. Okay, and the structure of the securitization shall be as provided, approved by the central bank. The only purpose of transferring your security file to some other company, maybe a subsidiary, should only be for the purpose of securitization. So everything is covered under this act. Now that is why you must have a properly designed act in place. Otherwise, you will have to end up everything in courts. A registered establishment or special purpose vehicle shall effect securitization only with the approved approval of CBSN. Right. 
A transfer of assignment under subsection shall not relieve the transfer of its duties under the finance lease or alter the nature of legal. Okay. So you have the bank can decide we'll securitize this facility. Now, these are something describing special purpose vehicle. Okay. So special purpose vehicle is for the mitigation of risk, right? Then the holding company's property. Okay. Now, in simple terms, it's like this. You take a leasing facility from XYZ Bank. And XYZ Bank can hand over your RMV book where absolute ownership lies with XYZ Bank to some other bank or some other company which we call special purpose vehicle. Okay. So this company, basically subsidy of the mother company, will accumulate such leasing facilities and securitize it, bundle it and take a loan for this security that is called securitization. So that part is covered under our act. We call that special purpose vehicle. Trans of lessee's rights to the equipment. A lessee, the user, shall not accept with the written permission of the lessor and subject to any rights of third parties transfer the right to possession and use of the equipment under finance. Okay. So the user cannot transfer his using right to some other person, any third party. However, if he get the approval from the bank, yes, he can. Uh, let's see, accept written permission. Now, if you get a written permission from the bank, yes, you can. For the purpose of a third party means a person who is not a party to the finance lease. Okay. Nimal has taken a leasing facility for his three wheeler from XYZ Bank. Nimal now goes to a full-time job, therefore he can't run the vehicle. Nimal will hand over the vehicle to Ajit. Now Ajit is the third party. Means what? Ajit is not a party of the contract. The contract part is Nimal and the bank. Right? So Nimal cannot transfer the usage of vehicle to Ajit. If he does that, he has to notify it to the bank. Lessee's trustee in bankruptcy or creditors. The right of a lessor under this act may be, may be enforced against the trustee in bankruptcy. Okay. Then we are now looking at recovery of possession if resistance is not offered. Okay. Now, how do you seize the vehicle? When you are seizing the vehicle, if the user is not resisting, then it's very simple. A lesser, the bank, who becomes entitled to recover possession of any equipment under this act, notify such right to the OIC of the police station for the area. Obtain the assistance of a police officer. Okay. That is to prevent a breach of the peace in the exercise. Now I'm going to seize the vehicle which I own. First bank has to notify it to the OIC of the area where the vehicle is parked. Then, if needed, obtain the service or the assistance of police officer to prevent a breach when I'm taking over the vehicle. Recover possession of the equipment from the place it is found. If the possession could be obtained without resistance from the person in possession of the equipment or where it is not in the possession of any particular person without resistance from any person. Okay. So if you can take the vehicle without any resistance, you can do it. If not, now they are resisting. Okay, I'm not going to uh, leave the vehicle with you. I'm, and he is resisting. Then you have to go through the courts. Where a lesser fails to recover possession of equipment under section 27. So that is without resistance. Or where a lesser has reasonable ground to believe that it is impracticable to obtain possession under that section. So when the bank think the customer is not going to hand over the vehicle peacefully, 
when the bank thinks so, they can go to courts, the district court. Within whose jurisdiction the finance lease had been entered into for an order of possession of the equipment. The application under subsection shall be made by way of petition. Okay, so now these items show how you do that. Recovery of monies due to under the finance lease in an application under section 28. So you have section 27, the peaceful reposition. Okay. Now this is if even after seizing the vehicle, if there are money to be recovered, how you do that? Okay. Now I'm leaving these for you to read to get an understanding. And uh, next week we will do some questions on leasing related past papers. Then you will identify and understand what are the important areas to study on the, under this subject. Okay. Now we'll talk a little bit about these facilities. Earlier, you have to have money to buy things. Then came the financial intermediation. Means what? You don't want to have money to buy things. The bank will finance that. We call it leverage. You know what is lever? With the lever, you can wait. You can lift weights, which you can, which you can physically, which you cannot physically do. Right? By using a lever, you can lift weights, which physically impossible. That's what leverage is. Now let's assume your monthly salary is 60,000. That is your salary. Okay. Then let's assume that you can comfortably save 10% of that. What is the amount? 6,000. Let's assume you are saving that for one year. How much you can save? 72,000. Okay. Per year, you can save 72,000. Okay. Let's assume that a vehicle is valued at 7.2 million. How many years will you will it take? for you to purchase a vehicle at this rate if you don't go for the loan facility leasing facility how many years will it take yeah per annum you are saving 72000 the vehicle value is 7.2 million Let's assume the vehicle value is not changing. There is nothing called in, uh, inflation. Yes. So it will take that much of years. Let's assume you are 22 years old now. How old will you when you own your first vehicle? You will be 122 years old. That's not practical. That's not practical. Then what you do? You go to a bank, get the vehicle today itself. That's where leasing becomes a leverage. So the countries that take loans develop faster. Today we call, if a country is self-sufficient, that means, if a country is self-sufficient, that means you are poor. If a country takes loan, then you can do massive things which you cannot otherwise do. Okay. So that's why people take leasing loan facilities. You need not to wait. Suppose you can make an earning out of money, but the interest is high. 
right so the interest should be set off okay by the usage okay first let me take an individual example then i'll take a nation right. let's assume a person who has never taken a loan but has been a school van driver for let's say 10 years now he's interested in owning a vehicle of his own hey and he's not having much money he go to a leasing company leasing company charge a higher interest rate than a commercial bank but this person does not qualify for the lending at the commercial bank then he goes to finance company at a higher interest rate than the bank he gets leasing facility but from the day one he is earning what is better what is better to get the loan from a leasing company at a higher interest rate but still make a living out of that that is the best thing then i'll talk about a country tell me a country that came from developing status to develop status within one generation now the former governor of central bank on his retirement day he said now he's about 80 years old what did he say when i was a student this country was a developing country and i'm now this much of age still it's a developing country means what if you take within his time within his 80 years old time he was born in a developing country and he is now in the tail end of his career life still he is living in a developing country tell me a country where a person was born as a citizen of a developing country but when he reached the age of 30 he is living in a developed country tell me such example a country that became a developed country okay tell me some other examples okay okay yeah yeah tilakshya what is your question is bangladesh a developed country okay japan took a long time to reach the developed nation when you look at their duration they started in latter part of 1840s yeah right and they yeah now bangladesh you can compare in certain areas don't compare bangladesh with sri lanka in many areas in many areas sri lanka is very much developed than bangladesh okay. in many areas sri lanka is developed than bangladesh you must go and see bangladesh right right now japan they took a long period to reach the developed status right they started with a superb fantastic thing called meiji restoration okay so that was during uh, even before second world war meiji restoration okay. that was the era where they came to this path now countries like dubai and singapore are not good examples why they are small countries we are totally depending on exports yes that was the example i am waiting for korea okay now korea they took loans there was a guy called general park chan he he took power and he first went into highway development right now let's see whether i can take some pictures if it's if my internet is fast i can show you some pictures from yeah south korea right south korea there was a guy called general park chan he and he became a dictator no elections 
people and he developed a highway in South Korea. Let's see if we can get something. Yeah, that's it. So this is the first highway. Okay, when the country was having less than 100,000 registered vehicles, he construct a highway, an expressway. Okay, and this is the guy, General Park Chan Hee. Okay, he next went to another massive project that is steel factory okay so their path was somewhat similar to us and steel factory okay then they went for the massive steel factory all were on lawns right almost like our journey right Massive expressways means what state is investing on infrastructure. Then he developed a hub, a massive hub like our Hambantut hub. Then when he was constructing this expressway, there were less than 100,000 vehicles, registered vehicles in South Korea. And the people, the so-called patriotic people who came to this opening were not even wearing shoes, forget about vehicles. That was the poor country. Right. So in this poor country, he built highways, next a massive harbor, and next a steel factory. Now state invested in a factory, a harbor, and a highway where people have nothing to do. Then the World Bank Economist report came in 1966, if I'm not mistaken. South Korea has not identified their economic priorities. In a country where people are starving, these people are creating white elephants, almost like Sri Lanka. Now comes your issue, interest. Pay the interest, you have taken loans and done these things and you are not generating a single cent out of that like our uh, Lotus Tower. Now pay, now we are in trouble. The South Korean General Park Chan Hee discussed with developed nations uh, how to go for next steps. America was not at all ready to help. They need democracy to be established first. And General was happy to say I'm, that will be the last thing to establish in our country. Okay, fine. They went to German and uh, said, okay, we have a resource, that's human beings, our labor. We will give sell our labor to you. And German said, okay, we are ready to accept males as miners to get into the planet earth and dig metals out of earth. Our Germans are not happy to do that. That's a very risky job. So they went for that. Females, for females, there's a job opportunity, nursing. Our ladies are not interested in that. So that was a super package, like Sri Lanka sending male and females to Dubai and other countries. They did the same to Germany. But they used that money very wisely. Then unlike in Sri Lanka, they believed in their own industrialists. So they have identified five basic good people who can run businesses. So they gave almost all their loans to five big companies. Basically, Hi Hyundai, Samsung, Daewoo, LG, and a few others. Even now, the South Korean GDP is depending upon five, six big companies. Okay. And within their lifetime, they reached developed status purely out of loans. So don't blame loans. You must be creative enough to understand how to make good usage of loans. I don't think anyone blamed South Korean President General Park Chan Hee for misusing the funds. That's a problem many developing countries face. 
most of the African countries are very poor, but their leaders transfer the wealth to European banks, and both are happy. Right? But for South Korea, General never had this uh, claim against him, but he was killed by a Korean. Okay. And uh, after that, democracy was established. Anyway, South Korea is a now democratic and a developed country. Okay, right. We were talking about taking loans. Either you wait for 100 odd years, save your own money, and buy a car. Or if you are a country, save 100 years and do Mahavali project. That's where President Jal Jawadan said, okay, accelerated Mahavali development project, took loans and constructed within six years. That's a good thing. Thanks to that, we all have electricity. Okay. Take loans, take good use. Now, Sri Lanka, for tourism, if there was tourism, how beautiful our country is now compared to what it was earlier. Right. From 2009 to 2019, not a single bomb blast was recorded in a war torn country. That was not even the case with even Paris or London or uh, any of these developed. Superb. Right. Then the infrastructure was perfectly placing. If you go to Dubai, Dubai is just sand and sun. That's all what they can say. Right? But they try their best to attract tourists and manage it. If you think about Malaysia, a Muslim country, in 1960s, they created this casino empire, Genting Highland. Okay. But in Sri Lanka, even in uh, 2020, if you go for port city, you still oppose port city. So how we can you develop this country? Okay. Right. Anyway, taking loans is not bad. Either you wait for 100 odd years or take a leasing facility and take the vehicle now. The problem is, are you making an income out of it? If not, Yes, it's a white elephant. Okay. There can be occasional issues. Now, this is an occasional issue where tourists are not visiting Sri Lanka. That's an issue beyond our control. If not, we were, in, we were traveling on a good path. So I'm not against taking loans. Our whole system is based on taking loans. But the problem is you must take loans which you can settle. Right. For Sri Lanka, Dubai, the problem is if tourists are not coming, you cannot settle your bills. That's the worst part. But in Sri Lanka, unlike Dubai or Singapore, we have so many other resources which are not even touched. Say agriculture. For agriculture, 1% of current employment is enough to generate the same level of output. But we have never looked into that fact. Okay. Now, Israel, they would say agriculture is 1% work, 99% science. That's how they say it. In Sri Lanka, no science at all for agriculture. Okay. And we are moving further down in this tunnel. Now, we don't like fertilizers. Now, what we should have done is we should have looked at how to effectively use fertilizers. Instead, we are blaming fertilizers and going for the backward, uh, chem clamor. The old tested failed systems, now we are trying to worship that. Even when it comes to COVID-19, initially, we were worshipping all the blacksmiths and magic, different kind of black magicians. Right? Like uh, what has been the case in Europe during Robin Hood era. That's the problem with us. Anyway, we have another topic to discuss. We'll see that also today. Right. Cooperative societies, one for all, all for one. There were very few questions generated out of this area. Anyway, I'll cover this. So the cooperative societies are governed by Cooperative Societies Law Number no. 5 of 1972. The purpose of this act is to provide for the development of cooperative societies to consolidate and amend the law relating to constitution and control of cooperative societies and to provide 
for the matters connected and incidental they are to that so you will define it anyway remember the law cooperative societies law number 5 of 1972 if i ask what is the law related to pawning you must be able to say okay 1947 uh, number 30 like this you must be able to say the law scope of okay then department of cooperative development now cooperative development department is the legal uh, okay they are the responsible party for the development of cooperative societies the legal division they say our role is this means what there are many cooperative societies scattered around the country and we will provide guidance and legal department says our role is to provide solutions guidance and advices for the legal status comes under the powers and the scope of register of cooperative societies now we are registering cooperative society now the department of cooperative societies scope registration amending laws combination of separation of assets and li liabilities cancellation of registration interpretation on sharing profit okay so as i mentioned all regulators register and cancel then other parts you have to remember cooperative societies act number 5 of 1972 and there were amendments in 1992 and some other amendments earlier as well main categories of institutions coming under cooperatives for example just remember this part rural banks societies on thrift and credit transactions so in singhala you have seen sampakara nay sakasuro maha nayadana samiti then cooperative societies of other financial services then bank supervision division so this is how they say about their responsibility divided under three main categories cooperative rural banks thrift other financial right so administrative of cooperative societies yeah regulatory task honorable minister of the subject supervision and division secretary consultation so then you have corporate bank regulatory cooperative bank regulatory national committee now who is the chairman he is the secretary okay then there are the instructions given for this maintaining of liquidation of financial service cooperative societies maximum interest rate that should be paid for the depositors suitable investment portfolio right so these are the areas they are advising streamlining the internal audit process recruitment guidings okay right basically cooperative societies are based on a thinking called one for all all for one in sri lanka cooperative societies became very popular in certain area and in certain areas even now that's very popular for example purpose okay what is the act what is the expected okay how we are running that anyway once again we'll look into some past papers with that then i'll show you one more important thing we talked about directions of central bank say corporate governance right now i have given you some reading materials now i'm asking you to look into these in internet as well directions of directions okay direction circulars guidelines for non banks you can directly go into the site then you will find these directions Okay. So on moratoriums, interest on moratorium. So these are directions.
concessions granted for tourism industry. Capital adequacy, credit ratings. Minimum core capital. Let's see minimum core capital. Okay. So signed by then the governor. Now the direction says minimum core capital. Like every licensed finance company at all times maintain an unimpaired core capital at a level not, not less than 400 million. Okay. So that's a direction 400 million. We'll see some other interesting things coming under. Concessions for COVID 2021. So that's the first one. Anyway, what I want to show is, yeah, there was, there was something on the propriety of directors, fitness and propriety. Let's see. Okay, so there were, yeah, now there is a recent development. Our age limit was 70, but after getting prior approval, a person can stay up to 75 years. So that was changed. I want to see that. Okay. Anyway, for your interest, I would show you can search like this and see the directions are continuously coming up and we are expected to, uh, we are expected to go through this credit support to accelerate economic growth. leasing and higher purchase facilities. The total penal interest accrued and unpaid shall be waived and 10% of the, so everything is in black and white. Credit facilities, excluding leasing and higher purchase facilities. Okay, so that's on moratorium. Okay. Anyway, I'm looking into, there was a recent development of this age category. So with prior approval, now you can go for 75 years. Okay, right. Anyway, I'll get that direction and uh, put it for your reading material. Anyway, just go through these directions. LTV, what is meant by that? Okay, so how do you look into these classes and what are the rates? What is the, how do you implement, implement that? Right, so how you get the valuation? Everything is notified in these directions. Okay, now once again, we have the nearly 30 minutes left. We'll look into 
past papers. Okay, so we talked about insurance. We talked about corporate governance. Now I'm leaving you a question where you have to yeah, this one, March 2019, question number, one minute, before that, we look into this first. March 2015, number six, a listed finance company intends to invest in a new project through establishment of a new subsidiary. So there is a finance company, okay, they are going to have a new subsidiary with the intention of having a new project under this subsidiary. In order to initiate the project, it tends to raise a large sum of funds. So the amount is not given, say 400 million from public within a reasonable period of time. So you need this money within a reasonable period of time, say within six months or maybe two months. Okay, let's say two months. You need 400 million within two months. A. Describe four possible ways that the finance company can raise such funds for business operation. First, tell me four methods. How do you get this 400 million? Number two, which of the above method has the ability to increase the supplementary capital? We talked about components of tier one capital, tier two capital. What can increase tier two capital? Number three, describe three disadvantages of raising funds through the method described in B. Now you said A, Four methods out of that, there will be impact on tier two capital in B. Then what are the disadvantages? D, explain major assets that the finance company can acquire out of above funds. When you have money, what can you buy? Okay, answer this one, March 2015, number six. We'll take one by one. Describe four possible ways that a finance company can raise such funds. Okay, you need 400 million. Then you need that money, say, within two months. How do you raise that money? Okay, so it's borrowing in what form? Tell me exact. Shares. Okay, tell me in what form? Loans. Now, debenture is one complete answer, I'll accept. Shares. Is it IPO? Is it a right issue? Likewise, tell me. Borrowings. In what form? Now, even, okay, you can say bank borrowing. Likewise. Be specific. Debenture, I'll accept. Okay, commercial papers, okay, right. One, two, three, four, tell me four sources. When you're answering, right, when you are reading questions, read the entire thing. Now, when you read the entire thing, you will see A, whatever I'm putting answer, I have something to do with that in B. B, whatever I have to do, there's something to do with in C. Okay, then all together, D is also affecting. So one, the answer for A, Affects to the list. With that view, send me one, two, three, four. Okay. Send me your answers in one, two, three, four format. What is number one? Read the question very carefully. A listed finance company. When you said shares, remember it's a listed finance company. Means what? Now you can't go for the IPO. You are already listed. If you are a listed finance company, what is the first option you have? Something very easy. Within you two months, you can definitely get this money. What is the first one? Yes.
yeah first one rights issue that is number one then even though you are the listed company you need this money for the new company okay so number one rights issue i have no argument with that then there is something which you can argue even though this company is a listed company you are going to start up a subsidiary okay then you can go for the ipo let's say people's leasing finance company is a listed company they want to get into insurance business they go for general public with ipo to start up people's leasing insurance plc now you can go for ipo not for the mother company but for the subsidiary so that will be your second option right so what is your third option obtaining loan from other banks then number four is debenture issue okay or you can even go for some other preference shares non-cumulative non-redeemable preference shares okay now we have answered for number one out of what you said you can go for right issue you can go for ipo since it's a subsidiary you can go for other bank borrowings or you can go for debentures right second question out of what you said under a which affects to the second one what affects to the second one you have four options supplementary capital what are the elements of supply yeah debentures okay if you are going for redeemable cumulative preference shares that is also there right okay so the second one is debenture right now the third question c describe three disadvantages of raising funds through the method you described in b for b you said debentures what are the three disadvantages of raising funds now we have raised 400 million by issuing debentures what are the disadvantages of obtaining money through debentures what are they now if you raise money from ipo for the subsidiary directly do you have to pay back your debenture one is high interest rate okay right what is the first disadvantage you raised 400 million and the duration may be five years for debentures after five years you have to pay this amount but if you have raised money through right issue or through ipo you need not to settle that amount so this 400 million will be yours until liquidated but if you raise money through debentures number one the maturity period you have to settle the amount in the maturity period. Number two, higher interest. Okay, so interest is high. Number three, the interest should be paid on periodical basis. So you must have enough capital ready, for, uh, cash ready for that. Then number four, increased gearing ratio. The loan to equity ratio goes high. Gearing ratio. Okay, higher gearing ratio. Then need to discount 20% annually. Means what? 400 million. I have to pay in five years. Each year, 20% I have to reduce from tier two capital. So these are the disadvantages. Then you ask the last one here explain major assets that the finance company can acquire out of above funds and importance of such assets to the finance company okay now we have 400 million out of this 400 million what you can buy as assets now we have 400 million what are the assets you will buy out of this a equals c plus sell your c is 400 million now if it's debenture your l is 400 million now now you have to balance that with a side assets what are the assets yeah 
assets. Your company raised 400 million. There's no point of keeping that in your locker. Then you will obtain assets. Okay. You can buy real properties. Within bracket, if you need, you can say buildings. Okay. Real, real estate properties. Right. So that's number one. Okay. What else? Others. Guilt edge securities, you mean, okay, right? Government securities, good. Guilt edge securities or government securities, you can buy a little bit of that. Then, other assets, I need two more. I need two more. Plant and machinery, very good, very good. What else? One more asset. Yes. One more asset class. Yeah, you can give loans. Right. So this question is asking you to think and answer. Say the questions we have so far done on insurance. Very direct. What are the two types of insurance? Okay. What is reinsurance? What is bank insurance? What are the products coming under general insurance? What factors affect your life insurance policy? Very direct answers. But this one, you know something out of that, you have to think and write. Okay. So you have to prepare for this kind of questions as well. Then a little bit difficult question where you have to use even a simple calculator. March 2019, I'm leaving that question with you now. Take your time, write the answers. Shall we see the answers? First one, five components of core capital of a licensed finance company. Okay, so what are the elements of core capital? I have given that in the class. What are the elements of core capital? Yeah, paid up, authorized, or in the shares. Okay. Then non cumulative, non redeemable reference shares. Then statutory reserves. Then other general reserves. Published profit and loss account. Unpublished profit and loss accounts. My dear, by now, your answers must quickly come like this. Without looking at any note, you must be able to give the answer. Okay. I'll read the model answer. Stated capital, non cumulative, non redeemable preference shares. Reserve fund, that's what I mean, SRR. Audited retained earnings, I said general uh, reserves. Then current year profit, subject to audit certification. Then uh, revaluation gains, surpluses of investment property to be excluded. Yeah, so that is not included. Okay, so that's the elements of tier one capital. Okay, so this is not difficult, the first one. If you have gone through the notes quickly, without anything, you can talk about it. What does a high capital adequacy ratio of a licensed finance company indicate? Okay, first try to answer, then we'll discuss. High capital adequacy, what does it indicate? We talked about high capital adequacy and I've shown you, right? So you have written an answer, others? Yeah, I showed you central finance, the highest capital adequate company. Means what? Others, I'll give you three more minutes. I'll wait for three more minutes. I won't see others to look into that. So these two questions we have discussed in the class. So you must be able to answer. No doubt about that.
very good yes good they are able to face sudden loss thereby pay back their depositors buffer capacity to face sudden losses very good or you can say shock absorbing very good i'll read out the model answer the capital adequacy ratio also known as capital to risk weighted assets ratio measures the financial strength of a licensed finance company by using its capital and assets it is used to protect depositors and promote the stability and efficiency of financial systems around the world generally and licensed finance company with a high capital adequacy ratio is considered safe and has ability to meet the financial obligations so i'll agree with your answers then crm okay we look into the question again what is meant by credit risk mitigation crm credit risk mitigation and give four credit uh, risk mitigation techniques accepted under the finance business act direction on capital adequacy requirement for the licensed finance company okay like to answer for that take few minutes and like to answer first thing okay uh, risk mitigation how do you reduce the risk just think and try to answer credit risk mitigation when i am giving a loan i immediately i come across a risk what is the risk the money which i hand over you will you pay back now if you don't pay back what can i do so that is this mitigation think in that that line and send me your answer when i am giving you money as a loan i undertake a risk what is the risk defaulting if you default how can i mitigate that risk simple tell me how can i mitigate risk not a good okay very good let's see the answer credit risk mitigation means techniques that are used by financial institutions to mitigate the credit risk to which they are exposed the moment you give away loan you are undertaking a risk the risk is defaulting for example exposure may be collateralized by first prior priority claims first priority claims in whole or in part with cash or securities a loan exposure may be guaranteed by a third party or the bank may buy a credit derivative to offer various forms of credit risk right so when i am giving you a loan i doubt whether you will pay if you fail to pay i need collateral so by taking securities or accepting collaterals you can by insurance yes very good your answer is perfect right additionally banks may agree to net loans or to them against deposits from the same counterpart example provisions collaterals and capital credit risk management mitigation techniques allows the financial institution to maintain capital only for credit risk for an unsecured exposure whereas capital for exposed covered by an eligible collateral is not required okay right so crm introduced two types of credit risk protection collateralized transactions other crm techniques 
Okay. So when I'm giving away loans, I have two options, collateralized. Most of the loans which I'm against giving loans are securitized against. So that is the first part. Second part, for those who are not collateralized, what? CRM technique accepts under the Finance Business Act direction on capital adequacy requirement of a licensed finance company. Number one, cash. Number two, government securities. Number three, debt securities rated by external credit rating institutions. Number four, equities that are included in main index. So these are the rest. Okay, then you have the last part. ABC Finance PLC has granted a loan. Now the loan amount is 1 million to a retail customer and he has pledged a debt security issued by XYZ Bank for 800,000. Okay, now he is partly collateralizing. I'm giving away a loan of 1 million. Out of this 1 million, he gives me a security, a debt instrument issued by XYZ Bank and that is rated as B double B plus, that is 50%. That is 50%. Means what? I'm giving him a loan for 101 million and I'm accepting a security of 800,000, but the real exposure is 50%, 50% 50 of 800,000. Now, 400,000 is the risk weighted part of that out of 800,000. Now, 200,000 I am giving un collateralized loan out of 1 million, 800,000 collateralized. 200,000 remaining, which is not collateralized. So any loan which I have given away without any security, I have to uh, calculate it as 125% risk. So the risk component is 200,000 into 125. So that is the norm. For unsecured loans, my risk is more than the amount I have given. That is 125. 200,000 into 125, that is how much? 400, sorry, 200,000 into 125, that is 250,000. 200 multiplied by 100 is 200,000. 100% is 200,000. Then I have the remaining. 25% into 200,000, that is 50,000. So altogether, risk weight there is 250,000. The other one, 800,000 securitized, but the risk is 50%. So that is 400,000. 400,000 plus 250,000 is 650,000. So my calculated risk weight asset is 650,000. So my answer is 650,000. Okay. So 1 million is the loan I'm giving away. Out of this 1 million, 800,000 is guaranteed by a security. Okay. Now, out of this 800,000, it's double B plus means 50%. Means what? Out of 800,000 risk weight asset is 400,000. So that's one part of the question. The other, 1 million minus 800,000, that is 200,000, that is unsecured. Now this 200,000 is unsecured. So unsecured risk weight is, okay, so the risk weight percentage for unsecured is 125. That is for unsecured. Now earlier I have given you in the risk weighted calculations, yeah, uh, zero risk, cash and cash equivalent, zero risk. Loans against FD, zero risk. Likewise, I have given you percentages. Now, for anything which is unsecured, you charge 125. So 200,000 into 125 divided by 100, that is equal to 250,000. Right? So the first one is, first component, 50%, 400,000. The second component, 250,000. And altogether, risk weighted asset is 650,000. Okay. Now, remember, this is the only question so far raised with the calculation for risk weighted assets.
So when we are talking about capital adequacy, I ask you to remember what are the components of tier one capital, what are the components of tier two capital, and how do you calculate the squared assets? The entire thing is tested with one question. Then you have to understand and answer. Now the first type of questions you take pawning, what is the act? What are the duties? What are the breaches? Like by hearty. Insurance related, almost like by heart. But capital adequacy related, you have to think, see all the four questions. We have learned that, but you are given chances to think. Okay, debenture, what is that? Is it tier one capital or falling to tier two? What are the disadvantages? Likewise, you have to think. Okay, so with that, I would say I have completed the syllabus other than microfinance. For microfinance, I checked with past papers, only one MCQ was raised, so find that. Anyway, I'll do a little bit on microfinance. With that, I can say I have completed the entire syllabus. I have completed questions on insurance. And uh, yeah, we talked about this part. What is the first one coming under that? Yeah. We completed the insurance then okay we talked about capital adequacy we talked about corporate governance okay so next week be prepared with primary dealers payment systems uh i think we covered unit trust okay so primary dealers payment mechanism then what we did today leasing and operating lease that part be prepared, I'll come with questions from that area. So next month will be almost for past papers. And we, uh, then we can end this entire session. Anyway, you can access to evaluation form now. And after the session, you can evaluate and submit it. I'll end today's session. Thank you. Okay, so there will be evaluation form. Please complete that as well. Thank you.